All glory is to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. All glory is to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. All glory is to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. All glory is all glory is Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga Mahaprabhu Shri La Prabhupada ki. Okay. Today we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 9th canto. <coughs> Hopefully, this will be pleasing to you all. <coughs> Maybe all of you know this first time. <coughs> so, let us read it together. Purport and translation by His Divine Vishila Prabhupada. <coughs> Please repeat after me. As a chaste woman, As a chaste woman bring, bring their gentle husbands, their gentle husbands under, control under control by service. By service. By service. The pure devotees, the pure devotees, who are equal to everyone, who are equal to everyone, and completely attached to, and completely attached to me, me, in the core of the heart, in the core of the heart, bring me, bring me under their full control, under, under their full control. control. <coughs> in this verse, the word samadarshana is significant. The pure devotee is actually equal toward everyone, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 1854. Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma Nasochati Nakankshati Samasarvesh Bhutyeshu Bhad Bhaktim Lavate Param. Universal brotherhood is possible when one is a pure devotee. Pandita Samadarshina 518. A pure devotee is actually learned because he knows his constitutional position. 
he knows the position of the supreme personality of godhead and he knows the relationship between the living entity and the supreme lord thus he has a full spiritual knowledge and is automatically liberated brahma bhuta therefore he can see everyone on the spiritual platform he can comprehend the happiness and distress of all living entities he understands that what is happiness to him is also happiness to others and that what is distress to him is distressing for others therefore he is sympathetic to everyone as prahlad maharaj said suche tato vimuka chetasa indriyardha maya sukhaya bharam udvahato vimudham people suffer from material distress because they are not attached to the supreme personality of godhead a pure devotee's chief concern is therefore to raise the ignorant mass of people to the sense of krishna consciousness <coughs> om ajnana timranda srigana angana shalakaya chakshunun meritam jena tasmay sri gurave namaha sri chaitanya mano bhishtam sthapitam yena bhutale स्वयं रूपाकधाम ददाति सुखदाक वंदेहम श्रीगुरो श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुरुन वैष्णवांश्रीरोपम साग्रजात सहागना रघुनाथ तम सजीव साइत सवदूत पर्यना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सहागना ललिता श्री विशाखाता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरिप्रिय वंचाकलतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो विष्णुपाय कृष्ण प्रष्टा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Atta Jis. Definitely, I don't have any qualification. Sit in front of you and speak something on Shrimad Bhagavatam. But by your mercy, by your blessings, I will try to speak something for my own purification. And Lord <coughs> Krishna's glorification. <coughs> This past time, in Shrimad Bhagavatam ninth canto. <coughs> This is very, uh, very uh, popular past time actually. The past time of who? Maharaj Ambarish. In any every Bhagavat Katha, this past time will be narrated. <coughs> so I chose this past time. It's a very interesting past time. I'll give you a little introduction about brief introduction. Who is the Ambarish Maharaj and what happened to him? So Ambarish Maharaj. <coughs> is in the uh, line of uh, i think uh, surya dynasty i think <coughs> so his uh, grandfather was nabhaga 
His grandfather was Nabaga. He is a great. He was a great king. And his son was <coughs> Nabaga. Nabaga. His son is Nabaga. <coughs> and his son is Maharaj Ambarish. So Maharaj Ambarish was a great king, and is very knowledgeable. A very powerful king. He was the king of the not only one country. He was the king of the whole world actually. The seven continents were under his control. <coughs> Even though he was so powerful, he was completely detached from his position. In Shrimad Bhagavatam, Shukadeva Goswami is telling, how come a person so conquered so powerful, so wealthy. How can we become so detached from everything? Even though he is ruling the kingdom, he was not attached. At the speck of the moment, he is ready to leave the kingdom and go out to go into the forest. Is that possible for us? No. We build a small or big house. We build so much. Bank balance. Will it be possible for us to leave everything at the speck of the moment? But King Ambarish was so detached. Shukadeva Goswami is telling, how come it is possible for him? He tells that because he was the sincere and dedicated, pure devotee of. Lord, Supreme Lord, Lord Sri Krishna. That is the secret of success. Even if he wants to become king also, because he became the king, why? Because he is, the, he is a devotee of the Supreme Lord. So in Bhagavatam, Vasudeva Bhagavati, Bhakti Yoga Prayajita, Janeti Ashi Vairagyam, Jnanchi Yadu Haitkam. Sudha Goswami is telling that this is the secret. <coughs> if you want to become detached, at the same, if you want to become rich also, you become the devotee of Krishna. Both are possible for you. You may be possessing so much, at the same time, you are detached. That's why Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayajita. By the process of devotional service, Bhakti Yoga, you serve the Supreme Lord, whatever the way, according to your own capacity. That gives you two things. It gives the renunciation and it gives the knowledge also. Just like a byproduct, you know, we are doing something and some other things are coming out. So by doing bhakti, what is happening? Ultimate thing is, knowledge is coming, okay, that's fine. Renunciation is coming. More than that, you will get the satisfaction. <clears throat> In the first class, I was telling that. What is that? By, you are very, too much hungry. You started taking the food. What is happening? What happens when you take food? Three things happens. Does anybody remember? Maybe almost a month and a half back. Yes, I told the same exam. You remember? Satisfaction. Okay. When we are hungry, when we started <coughs> ball by ball <coughs> eating, what is happening? Three things. <coughs> First thing, you are happy. While eating one by one, one by one, you are becoming happy. Isn't it? <clears throat> Next, your hunger, hunger is going down. Slowly it is reducing. Half of the food is finished. You are not hungry as earlier, as in the beginning. Your hunger is half reduced. That means, <clears throat> by piece by piece, your hunger is reduced. And next, <clears throat> you are completely satisfied. Once you are done, 
you are satisfied if somebody else brings with a nice prasadam will you are you going to eat you are not going to eat because you are completely satisfied similarly bhata ji can you give me please some water let me set this so in that way bhakti is a such a powerful thing that's why i said that bhakti parayishan bhavo anu bhakti parayishan bhavo virakti anyatra chayesha trikayeka kalaha prapadhyamanasya yadashna tatus a tusti pushti anugas thank you no no so bhakti parayishan bhava when we do the bhakti the isha anubhava isha anubhava means the uh, uh, what do you call uh, <coughs> experience of the supreme lord we can experience the supreme lord directly by doing the bhakti process you can see the supreme lord you can experience the supreme lord in your heart bhakti para isha anubhava virakti then what is happening slowly you will be developing the virakti detachment from this material world why we have to develop detachment in this material world because we have to leave everything one day thank you very much wonderful direct answer because we have to leave this at one day without any without any notice there are no notices of course notices are there but we don't notice them you don't notice no somebody said no that uh, joke i told <coughs> i gave notice what is that notice my hair and you know eyebrows are white what does that mean i do you have to go ready get ready man but what i am doing i am putting cover on that <laughs> covering it <coughs> my hair is grey putting cover on that my knees are paining and not able to sit down these are all the notices this was there when you are 40 or 30 years in all this was not there as soon as you touch 40 45 started that means get ready notices are there so detachment we have to develop so the other reason why we have to develop detachment means if you are still attached to this the danger is if we have to come back that many people don't know that you can detach no problem you can attach no problem but the danger is you have to come back krishna doesn't have any problem to bring you back in whatever the possible way he is not a wrong of course he is eager to bring you back to him but if we are not interested he doesn't force us it's a loving devotional service it's not a forcing devotional service can i ask somebody okay you love me you love me you know, can i force somebody no somebody said that if somebody is not loving you what does that mean is there problem with you or somebody problem with me somebody is not loving means it's problem with me not that person So that's why. So we have to. If somebody is not loving me, problem. that is a problem with me, not the other person. We think that no, he is not loving me. That is problem with oh, him. Okay. No problem with me. I didn't do something for him so that he can love me. Okay. That is the reason. So ultimate point is we have to get detached. I was telling in another lecture. how many of you are ready to leave nanna fast na leave the body yes nanna fast ready to leave is it it not are like a suicide no. yeah i am ready but not for a suicide not a suicide <laughs> not a suicide <laughs> in that day i was hearing a lecture if krishna comes with a pushpak vimana it is landed in narwood uh, this what is the apartment name <laughs> Eight zero one. Eight zero one. In front of eight zero one, it is landed. Where, Prabhu? With everybody. 
Well, Prabhu, please come. Let's go. Let's go to Krishna. How many of us are ready? I am ready. You are ready? Seriously. Very good. Thank you very much. I have to reach at home. I am ready. I want to take everybody with me. No, Very no, good. No, Very good. That's really good. Yeah, that much readiness. Because ultimately we have to go. It's not that we have to be. We will be here forever and Krishna is calling. No, no, no. We have to leave. And Krishna is calling. But we think, wait. In one of the movies, we saw it. Pandavan Mahachar. Yeah. Tukaram's movie. Tukaram's Yes. Yes. He comes now. What is what his wife says? Don't go. I am milking the cow, uh, buffalo. You go, I am coming later. That is to come, but she uh, was taking like Pundarayakad. Bhakta to karam. Bhakta to karam. Yeah, I remember that bhakta. When I say bhakta, somebody said bhakta to karam. That is there, you know. Krishna came and he stayed. Tukaram said, my dear wife, let's go. Krishna has come. She said, no, I don't want to come. You go. <laughs> so like that, we don't want to go. That's why, Knowledge is very important. This knowledge gives you that detachment. More than knowledge, service to Krishna gives you this renunciation. This renunciation. So, <coughs> what happened? Where were you? Um, I was Amarish Maharaj. He was so detached. <coughs> but one time, what happened? In the process, one time Durvasa Muni came to his house. You know Durvasamuni is famous for what? Anger. Anger. Yeah. Wherever angry means Durvasamuni. So many past times. <laughs> he is a big yogi. He is a sannyasi. But he is so angry. So one time he came. Okay, wonderful. <clears throat> he came. Uh, that day happened to be a Dwadashi day. Before day was Ekadashi. Amarish Maharaj was fasting. Next day is Dwadashi. So on the Dwadashi day he came. He didn't come accidentally. Purposefully he came. He wanted to test the Amrish Maharaj. Okay, he came. So what is the etiquette? The etiquette is we have to feed the guest nicely. After guest eats, then only we have to eat. That is our etiquette. That is a Vedic, you know, that is a yeah. culture actually. Yeah. I don't know how, long, how far it is there now. But that is etiquette. Huh? So what happened? Amrish Maharaj said, uh, My dear Swami, Rishi, please go and take bath and come back. By the time you come back, things will be ready for you. Lunch will be ready for you. Okay, he went to Yamuna to take bath. But what happened? It was taking long time. Purposefully, you know, so when things are purposeful, it becomes, you know, violent. So, but uh, for Amrish Maharaj to break the fast, the time is going. Because in Dwadashi day, there is a certain time period in the time you have to break the fast. If you don't break the fast in that time, what happens? You don't get the, the phala, you don't get the fruit. The result you won't get. So he is waiting, 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 he didn't come. But his time is good. So Amrish Maharaj is so, it's a nice, uh, he's a knowledgeable person. He immediately called his Brahmins, his Gurus <coughs> in the ashram. So this is the situation, what should I do? He, he took the consultation, you know. And they said that you can drink water. You can take some water. With that too, it's a two ways. Simultaneously, you are breaking your fast, and simultaneously, you are not eating. Especially, very scripturally, you know, it's very tricky. If you don't uh, understand properly, if you don't know, take it from a guru, it's always dangerous actually. You can commit more uh, mistakes, more uh, dangerous things. So what happened? On the advice of the Brahmins, he took the water. You know, he wanted to test you. And the Durvasamani came to know. Because he said, recollect it, he knows actually. <coughs> With his yogic power, he came to know that Durvasamani has eaten. And he became very angry instantly. Instantly he got, and he is very powerful man. 
with yogic power. What did he do? Immediately, he pulled an air from his head and he created a Brahma Rakshis. Demon. He created a big fiery demon. And instructed the demon to go and eat Amrish Maharaj. Here is another message. What is happening? What is the behavior of Amrish Maharaj at this situation? He saw the demon. It is coming to devour him. Swallow him. But Amrish Maharaj was not moved an inch. What happens? People will be scared, no? Will be running. Or he will be maybe touching feet of the money. But he didn't do anything. He was simply silent and sitting and he was meditating on the Supreme Lord. Because he's a pure devil. Immediately what happened? Lord Sudarshan came. Sudarshan came immediately, it killed the, <coughs> the demon. And it started chasing, chasing <laughs> Durvasana. It's about to kill Durvasamuni also. But Durvasamuni, with his yogic power, he is running. He is running throughout the entire universe actually. Entire universe. He is approaching different, different personalities. But nobody could protect him. Ultimately, he went to Brahma. So there is a nice prayer actually. I am going to read that. You know, very nice. How Brahma answers is. <coughs> Let's see. Quickly. Nine. Three. Three. Ten shlokas. One, one. <coughs> yeah. Sri Brahma Vacha. Brahma is telling. <coughs> what is that? Sthanam Madhiyam Sahavishwameta Kridavasane Dvi Parartha Samhye Bhubhanga Mate Nahi Sandhi Daksho Kalatmano Yasya Tribhova Tribhovishya Vishas Vishyati Aham Bhavo Daksha Bhrugupadartha Bhrugupradhana Prajesha Bhutesha Suresha Mukya Sarveva Yam Yan Niyamam Prapanna Murdhi Mudna Murdhya Pitam Loka Hitam Bahama Translation Lord Brahma said At the end of the Dvipararda When the pastimes of the Lord come to an end Lord Vishnu by a flick of his eyebrows vanquishes the entire universe including our places of residence <coughs> what is that to paradha <coughs> at the paradha at the he is talking about the annihilation at the time of the annihilation what happens is large past times will be over this creation is Created for <coughs> Lord's enjoyment. Yeah. Generally, we think that uh, this is for our own enjoyment. This material world is not for our enjoyment. Or even total creation itself is for his enjoyment. Huh? Yes. But we are participating in that enjoyment, that's why we are enjoying. Prabhupada gives a nice example. One wealthy rich man is there. He has got a very latest and greatest and Rolls Royce car all the facilities but he cannot drive the car he needs a driver ok what the driver does he drives the car when he is driving the car he is enjoying all the facilities of the car as the owner enjoying isn't it yes everything he gets music AC everything he gets even more than him actually is it similarly why he is getting that? Because he is cooperating with his master. That's why he is having the same thing he is getting. Similarly, when we are cooperating with the, our master, the Supreme Lord, we will get all the benefits of this creation. 
isn't it? So that's why this world is, we have to recognize that this world is created for his enjoyment and we should be ready to cooperate with him. Then we will be happy. But what is happening? We are not happy now. Why? Because we are not cooperating with him. We think that this Rolls Royce car is for my enjoyment. No, it's not. As soon as the driver thinks that this is for my enjoyment, what the owner does? He kicks him out. He gets another driver. The same thing is happening with our situation. So here, <coughs> Lord Brahma is telling, what is that? By flick of the eyebrow, <coughs> what happens? This whole world is annihilated. Flick of whose eyebrow? Lord Vishnu's eyebrow. So what is telling, my dear Durvasa, you are coming and taking shelter of, asking shelter for me. But uh, whom should I fight with? Lord Vishnu. Who is that Lord Vishnu? He is the owner of this entire thing. I have to cooperate with him. I have all these places, all these facilities because of his mercy. And you are asking me to protect from him. That is not possible. That's what he says. <coughs> including our places of residence. All these lokas, Brahma loka, Jana loka, Tapa loka, Mahar loka, all these lokas are there. These are all his residences actually, it's not my residence. Next, such personalities as me and the Lord Shiva is already indicated here. Next thing he is going to Shiva also. He is already telling here. What is he telling? Me and Lord Shiva as well as Daksha, Bhrugu and similar great saints of which they are the head and also the rulers of the living entities, the rulers of the human society and the rulers of the demigods. All of us surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu, bowing our heads to carry out his orders for the benefit of all living entities. That is our situation. So how can I protect? I am sorry. You go to, I cannot do that. <coughs> so he simply lifted his hands. Next where he goes, next he goes to, <coughs> ah, you see, when Durvasa, who was greatly afflicted by the blazing fire of the Sudarshana Chakra, was thus refused by Lord Brahma, he tried to take shelter of Lord Shiva. Then he went to Lord Shiva, <coughs> who always <coughs> resides in his planet known as Kailasha. He is in Kailasha. Do you know who is Lord uh, who is the father of Durvasa Muni? Lord Shiva is father. Durvasa Muni is son of Lord Shiva. Okay. Lord Shiva said, My dear son, I, Lord Brahma, and the other devatas who rotate within this universe under the misconception of our greatness cannot exhibit any power to compete with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Did you understand the sentence? <coughs> okay, <coughs> Lord Brahma and the other demigods who rotate within this universe under the misconception of our greatness. Lord Shiva is accepting that we are under the misconception. What is that misconception? They are great. They are great. Lord Brahma is the creator of this universe. Lord Shiva is the annihilator of this universe. Both of them are thinking that we are under misconception. But we also think so many times we are great. Isn't it? But we never think that under misconception. I am 100% right. You know, I am 100% convinced that I am great. Isn't it? These past times are all you know, like you know, big lessons for us actually. Each and every moment they give us some lesson. No, we are not God. If somebody is thinking that he is great, he is a great misconception. <coughs> Somebody said, we think you are great? Yes, you are a great fool. <laughs> Prabhupada says. Yes, what kind of greatness we have? Nothing. What is our size? What is one ten thousand tip of the hair? That is the soul size. So where is our greatness? What is our false ego? What is our ego? It's like mountains. Huh? <coughs> so next term. Uh, <coughs> okay, we'll skip some more slokas. 
there after being disappointed even in the taking shelter of lord shiva durvasa muni went to to vaikuntha dham then he said that lord shiva instructs i cannot do anything you go and surrender to him only lord vishnu so he went to vaikuntha also <coughs> there after being disappointed even taking shelter of lord shiva durvasa muni went to to vaikuntha dham where the supreme personality of godhead narayana resides with his consort the goddess of fortune so durvasa muni the great mystic scorched by the heat of sudarshan chakra fell at the lotus feet of narayan his body trembling he spoke as follows o infallible unlimited lord protector of the entire universe you are the only desirable object of for all devotees i am a great offender my lord please give me protection ultimately he has given protection point this is here is a very important thing. what lord vishnu said <coughs> here our shloka came shloka point is here <coughs> what is that <coughs> oh my lord a supreme controller without knowledge of your unlimited prowess i have offended your most dear devotee very kindly save me from the reaction of this offense you can do everything for even if, if a person is fit to for going to hell you can deliver him simply by awakening within his heart the holy name of your lord shiva in this shloka there are so many messages <clears throat> one thing he said that i didn't understand properly the power of your devotees and more than that power of your lord is feet i didn't understand if i understood properly i would have not done this mistake another thing he said that you are such a powerful you will save a person who is ready to go to hell how he said the message also the holy name of your lord shiva by giving your holy name you can save a person who is going to hell that means the holy name is so powerful supreme lord's holy name is so powerful This verse, Shrimad Bhagavatam, last shloka, is telling that what is that? Nam Sankirtanam Yasya Sarvapa Pranashanam. Whose name you are chanting, that will protect you from all the sins. Okay? So next, here the Lord <coughs> says, the Supreme Person of Godhead said to the Brahmana, the Duvasmani, what he said? I am completely under the control of my devotees he also lifted his hand i cannot do anything brahma lifted his hand lord shiva lifted his hand even sudarshan chakra owner of sudarshan chakra is vishnu he also lifted i cannot do anything Baba. that is why it said shastra said that you can do something to the god no problem god can forgive you but if you do something to the devotees Very dangerous. Next guy is Vaishnu Apara. You know, Apara basically everybody is a Vaishnu. Huh? Everybody is a Vaishnu. Everybody is son of the Supreme Lord. That means everybody is Vaishnu. So that means we should not commit Apara that to anybody. We should not uh, create any anxiousness to anybody because Lord doesn't tolerate that. So now what happened? I am completely under the control of my devotees. Here is another message. supreme lord can give anything to anybody you ask some job okay no problem some money no problem wife husband no problem house money no problem i'll give everything but somebody comes my lord i want you i want to love for you what the lord says wait you have some time for because there are so many people in the line let me fulfill them if you want me you have to wait you need lot of patience that's why lord will give you everything but he will not give the love for you. love for him why if he gives the love for him he will be under your control the supreme lord is control over the entire creation is going to be controlled by you 
because of your love. That is why the pure devotees are always the fighting is going on. If you see in the past time, <coughs> Ambarish Maharaj is not worried about the, uh, the demon. Why? Krishna knows everything. Doesn't he know all these things? Krishna, the supreme controller, supreme proprietor, supreme enjoyer. He is the cause of all causes. He is a trikalagnya. He knows everything. Supreme knowledgeable. Such a person doesn't know what is happening to Durvasamani, sorry, Amrish Maharaj. He knows. When he knows, why should he worry? There is a proverb in Bengal. Raki Krishna Mareke, Mare Krishna Raki. What does that mean? If Krishna wants to kill you, nobody, nobody can protect you. If Krishna wants to protect you, nobody. nobody can kill you. If you can understand this sentence, and if you meditate on every day, there is no fear in this life for you. <coughs> you are completely fearless. So, Ambarish Maharaj knows what is happening. He is a supreme, uh, he is a pure devotee. He is completely depending on the Lord. Why does he have to worry about anything else? He is ready to kick his entire kingdom and ready to go away. Why he is uh, worried about anything else? <coughs> so, that is why it's a, uh, uh, we have to come to that stage. Then only we will become fearless. Otherwise, we will be feared for everything. Fear of losing, fear of disease, fear of this, fear of that, so many things, so many fears. Isn't it? <coughs> next one. <coughs> uh, next. I am not at all independent. Lord is telling that I am not independent. Then who is independent? He is it independent means he is dependent on his devotees. Devotee is telling, I am dependent on the Lord. This is a fight, always. This is a fight. <coughs> In uh, first, sixth cant, I think, Lord Shiva is telling to Mother Parvati, what is that? Uh, <coughs> uh, when Mara Chitraketu was cursed, you know the story of Mara Chitraketu? Chitraketu Maharaj was a you know, great again devotee of the Lord and he is the ruler of the <coughs> entire world. One day what happened? He was going in the plane. In the sky. And he looked down. And the Kailash. Lord Shiva is sitting there. Mm -hmm. What he was doing? He was sitting with Parvati. <coughs> Mother Durga. Where she is sitting? On his lap. Mm -hmm. Mother Durga is sitting on his lap. And what Lord Shiva is doing? He is talking to thousands of sannyasis, rishis. What he is talking? He is talking about the renunciation. It is very controversial, no? He is, he is, in, he is not in that situation. <coughs> but Lord Shiva is such a great personality. Whatever the situation he may be in, he is completely renounced. Even the mother Parvati is there with him, he is completely renounced. So Lord uh, um, Chitraketu, he looked at that and he laughed at it. Wow! What a wonderful scene. This is possible for only Lord Shiva. Nobody, this is possible for nobody else. He actually glorified Lord Shiva. But Mother Parvati misunderstood. And she immediately cursed him. You will become a big demon in your next life. See again this cursing is always known as a parampara system. <coughs> because of misunderstanding. Then Lord Shiva is telling him, why did you curse him? Do you think that he is going to scared of your curse? He is not worried, he is a pure devotee of the Lord. There he is telling that. <coughs> what is that to? Swarghapa Varga Narakeshwa Api Tulyarda Darshina Narayana Parasarve Na Kutaschana Bibyati Swarghapa Varga Narakasya Api Tulyarda Darshina What is the meaning? Narayana Parasarve Whoever is completely surrendered to Narayana who is completely became the pure devotee of the Narayan? Narayan Parasarve, 
నా కూటశ్చన బిభ్యతి బిభ్యతి మీన్స్ స్కేర్డ్ దే ఆర్ నాట్ స్కేర్డ్ ఆఫ్ ఎనీథింగ్ యు మిస్ అండర్స్టూడ్ హిమ్ దట్ ఈ ఈక్వల్ వాట్ ఇస్ అండ్ స్వర్గ అపవర్గ నర్కస్య ఫర్ దే హెల్ అండ్ హెవెన్ ఆర్ బోత్ ఆర్ సేమ్ దే ఆర్ రెడీ టు గో టు హెల్ ఫర్ ద లాడ్ సే వై యూ కర్సింగ్ సిమిలర్లీ హియర్ Amarish Maharaj, he is not worried about anything, he is simply doing this part, <coughs> neglected him. That's why, why? Because he is completely dependent on the Lord. Prabhupada says, what is the real independence? We celebrate Independence Day here, Independence Day there, everywhere Independence Day. What is the real independence? The real independence is, depending on the Lord is the real independence. I will give example, we all experience this. when we were small boys 5 years 6 years 10 years we were on our parents do you have any problem for us no problem everything everything our parents will take care like we don't know what is what our needs we don't know what our wants everything they will take care we simply you know time they come and eat and go and play and come back eat and go and come back. this is what we will do we are we are doing isn't it if you go on uh, quarrel with somebody your parents go on with you you know tell sorry to them isn't it it's not our to be fight with them and they come and ask for forgiveness compromise yeah. compromise that much is a similarly same thing should happen in our life whatever situation we are we have to completely depend on the lord then everything will be taken care so here Amarish Maharaj is completely dependent on the Lord. <coughs> Next, <coughs> ah. I am not at all independent. Ah. Because my devotees are completely divided of material desires, I sit only within the course of their hearts. What to speak of my devotee? Even those who are devotees of my devotees are very dear to me. That's a wonderful thing. <coughs> He is telling the idol, I am sitting in their heart. ఈశ్వర సర్వభూతానాం వృద్ధేశ అర్జున తిష్టతి బ్రాహ్మయన్ సర్వభూతాని యంత్రారూఢాని మాయ కృష్ణ శ్రీలింగ్ భగవద్గీత ఈశ్వర సర్వభూతానాం సర్వభూత మీన్స్ ఆల్ ద లివింగ్ ఎంటిటీస్ ఈశ్వర అండ్ ద ఈశ్వర కంట్రోలర్ ఈశ్వర సర్వభూత వృద్ధేశ అర్జున తిష్టతి తిష్టతి మీన్స్ సిటీ వేర్ ఈ సిటింగ్ ఇన్ ఆల్ అవర్ హార్ట్స్ ఈ ఇస్ దేర్ ఆల్వేస్ ఆల్ దట్ ఐమ్ ఈస్ ప్రొటెక్టింగ్ యూ Brahmayan Sarvabhutani. Brahmayan means rotating, driving. He is the driver. This is the Ratha. Chariot. This chariot, we think that we are driving. Isn't it? General, that is a misconception. We always think that no, I am driving. No. He is the driver. You are the owner. Sitting in the back seat, go left, go right. go ahead of all this you know we are telling all these things and he is ready okay let's go if krishna doesn't sanction that you cannot you lift your hand also you cannot lift your finger you cannot move your finger also krishna is there and he is sanctioning you are just ordering 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 isn't it so we should not forget that so he is there he is doing all the brahmin yantra rudha maya yantra this is yantra same example <coughs> krishna uh, drive the chariot of arjun same thing he is driving our chariot also he didn't try he didn't drive only arjuna's chariot he is driving our chariot also we are having different different chariots human being cat dog hog so many chariots we are getting he is driving all the chariots all the time but we don't recognize that <coughs> so i sit only within the course of their hearts what to speak of my devotee even those who are devotees of my devotees see he is how, how much he is taking care not only my devotees my devotees 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 means all the devatas are his devotees we have got how many 3 million 33 million devatas are there they are all his devotees so we are approaching brahma shiva indra chandra varna vayu we are all approaching them so we are their devotees so 
So what is telling? I am not taking care of them, but I am taking care of all other people. That means what? He is taking care of everybody. Such a wonderful Lord. <coughs> okay, now, we read the shloka, this is the one. <coughs> Okay. Now we came to this shloka. <coughs> what is that? A chaste woman bring their gentle husbands under control by service. The wife, what is she does? By all her service, she will control the husband. In Srimad Bhagavatam, the 10th canto, there is a chapter called uh, uh, King Muchkunda Deliverance. Muchkunda, there was a king, great king, such a powerful king, he went to heavenly planets to help the devatas in fighting the demons. He was a human being, he was living in the earthly planet, on the call of devatas, he went to earthly planet, heavenly planets and he fought with the devata, uh, devata, uh, the demons. Such a powerful king. <coughs> that powerful king is telling in one, uh, in the narration, I am 